And we're back. We're back indeed. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, the people watching on YouTube, which is waiting for the Twitch stream to warm up. Meanwhile, enjoy the moment for what it is. It's very easy to get caught up in the momentum that is life. Sometimes it's good to just time out. Time out meaning, you know. Appreciating for the moment. What the moment is. Now it's crazy that, you know, there's so much information flowing all the time that there is no opportunity for us to take a step back and to be by ourselves with our own thoughts. Thoughts are incredibly powerful, and there's a lot of things in our day-to-day -day that makes them numb. Thoughts, you know, anything around you comes from thoughts. Anything that is on the screen that you're seeing comes from thoughts. Whether it's a computer or a screen or a house or a building, everything came from thoughts. Ideas came from thoughts. It's very easy to not have any thoughts at all because we are being constantly told what to think and what to think about, both consciously and subconsciously. It's important to find moments in time where you disconnect and internalize. You disconnect with the world and you connect with yourself. Which um, might be profound, but this is something that our forefathers did all the time because they couldn't just uh, scroll up and down on Twitter. They couldn't go on Twitch and have 24-7 entertainment. It just wasn't a thing. And now... There's just something going on in front of us over and over again. But nevertheless, I think the stream has warmed up, warmed up enough. Just uh, post a quick tweet. There we go. And that's a tweet. There's a bit of irony in me saying disconnect and, uh, you know, enjoy the moment for what it is. And then I'm using Twitter to promote it. You know, of course, there's some good, good parts. I get to connect with the audience and the people that would like to follow me. You know, that's, that's a good side. But, you know, there's a lot of negatives. That's for sure. We went 2 0 this weekend. We beat G2 in, um, in a fashion that some might think is controversial. Uh, well, you know, I just wanted to share my two cents on the pauses. You know? So I tweeted out. Let me just pull out my tweet real quick. I tweeted out people complaining about pauses. We had a hex flash bug, clearly visible on the screen, and bubble screen turned off multiple times. We also had a full team DC at one point. We have the right to pause when we can't play the fucking game. So, the rules are as stated, you know, since I was a player, since the players are players, but the referees and the rule system that is in place is if you experience a bug, pause immediately. And I know a lot of people are saying, yo, Niski said on the interview, he thought he was bugged and that's why we paused. And then there was the hex flash bug, which he didn't understand fully, right? Keep in mind. Niski went to the interview right after the game. The game finishes, he goes off, he doesn't have a chance to process it, he doesn't even have a chance to think about it. He just goes into the interview and then boom, right? And that's okay, right? But Hilly, what he went through is, he's hex flashing, gets interrupted by the Everfrost, keeps channeling. So he has a channeling bar after he gets cancelled, which shouldn't be the case. 
just plain and simple shouldn't be the case and on his screen as he described it he was still hex flashing he was stuck in the wall and all in all you know it was a very very buggy experience that is a good reason to pause in the game once we had a team-wide disconnect we disconnected all of us just disconnected we, we just lost uh, connectivity to our computers and on top of that purple screen kept just it just didn't work the screen just kept dying on us right and i think that is a reasonable reason as to why you should pause and i'm not going to sit by and take blame for anything because riot can't get the shit together and that's fine right things happen you know things happen shits go wrong final thing i want to mention in regards to the pauses when we pause the game both teams go through a pause why would it be more beneficial to the other or the other way around after that first pause Irelia died entered it Bipo died on golems you know we sprinted it and you could argue that we lost focus after this pause right everyone goes through the same thing when you pause you're not allowed to speak you're not allowed to do anything right this idea of momentum i think is bullshit It just is, in my opinion. You're allowed to speak. Well, first pass was crucial. G2, let's say, win game the 9 out of 10 times. What, what, is, it that, what is it that makes the pause uh, so... What on earth, man? So we pause, and you know, Fnatic as a team, we, we are so insane that when we pause, we just do, do, do more damage coming out of the pause. It's just silly. Come on. It's very silly. And the people who say that, yo, Fnatic had enough time to prepare for the fight after the pause, bro, G2 had the same amount of time. You know, pausing can be very distracting. You know, it can be very, very distracting. Okay, don't get me wrong. Like, it can make you, it can be very distracting. It can get, pull you out of the game. For sure. Don't get me wrong. I, I know that as a player, I know that as a coach, that pausing, but... It, there is no benefit to one or the other team. The, the, both teams have to go through the same shit. And pauses suck regardless. They just suck. They just do. It sucks for both teams. There is no benefit here. You know? But nevertheless... G2 took the game on the chin, you know, and that's cool. To admit that, you know, a pause can be distracting, that's cool, because it can be, 100%. Vaccines cause pausing. Can a team talk about strategy during the pause? No. It happens at one point. At, at one point, you... You get to speak, but that is, like, close to the timer as the game gets unpaused so you get to speak at one point no once again you there is a psychological factor to it 100 percent, there's a psychological factor to it there is an impact to pauses but both teams go through the same thing so like i trained my boys you know sure 
I tell them in scrims, if there's a pause, you stay quiet, you relax, you maintain focus. You know, that's, that's something that every team hopefully goes through because we pause in scrims too. We pause in scrims all the time, right? It's not like I'm like using some, some strategy uh, to, to pause, you know, and to reassess. Because everyone is going, everyone in the game when the game is pausing go, is going through the same circumstance. That's the thing, right? And sometimes you have players to deal with it better, and you have some players to deal with it worse. Yamato randomly yells pause at intervals throughout the day to train the boys' mentals. Confirmed. Yes. <laughs> and maybe you deal with it better, maybe you deal with it worse. Like in this case, bro, my boys were sprinting it, man. My boys were sprinting it. They, they, we, we, we entered for quite a bit of time uh, after that pause. Yeah. But nevertheless, I know that uh, G2 took it well. G2 played a good game, you know. I, 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 I was happy to be a part of that game. I was very happy and proud to win that game. It was a good game. G2 took it on the chin, grabs. The players, they spoke up about it and they made sure that this wasn't the focus and maybe I'm giving it, you know, a little bit uh, too much focus. But this is what the podcast is for, you know, to talk about topics, to talk about drama because this is what people are going to click in the end. You know it is. You know it is. What do you think about actual cheats who ma might take drugs or use devices to help themselves win games? So I, I, saw, I saw LS talk about this topic and I've had the same thoughts. I've had the same exact thoughts because I truly believe that cheating is something that I can be a victim of. It's not necessarily, you know, just because I'm looking for ways to cheat. Not at all. Like, I wouldn't want to cheat. I wouldn't be able to fucking live, myself, live with myself. The point is, you know, you see, you begin to notice all the flaws that you are that are abusable, right? Like, how easy would it be, let's say, LEC Studio, the tickets, 10 euros. I get five of my homies. Let's say I get five of my homies, they're hooligans, and whenever the enemy is doing Nash, they stand up and they raise their hands. Ah, oh, shit, I have a vaccine arm. <laughs> vaccine arm. They, they raise their hand. Nash is being taken. We see in the crowd, they made a signal. Enemy is Nash. Enemy is doing Nash. And then when they, when they sit down, the enemy is bot side. The enemy jungle is bot side. They stand up, the enemy jungle is top side. Uh, they, they raise their beer in the, in the air, boom. It means that the homies are on Drake. You know, there's, there's also, like, it was ridiculous. You guys didn't go through the times when fucking unicorns of love fans and fanatic fans were swarming the studios. They were, they were filling the studios. And whenever the teams were doing something, they just started fucking reacting. And you could hear the audience. Like, you could hear the audience. Like you could just guess, oh, Nash is being done. You know, it's, it was it's hilarious, you know? And the same thing as Ella said. You, you could put shit in your shoes. You, you, can, you can do things, right? And the scanning thing that they do, it's, it's bullshit, man. Like, they scan us, they barely give a shit, man. I could hide a USB in my cufflinks. I could, I could hide a USB in my, in my necklace. I, I could hide it anywhere. I could hide it in my fucking Rolex. I could hide USB something, you know, easily. Right? I could, I could hide, hide the device where I can communicate with the players. Ellis also mentioned the fucking earpiece. Yeah, they don't try to check our ears. I don't know, man. Cheating, like, there's a lot of trust in esports and uh i don't know i i think i think adderall would probably just make players mechanically good but probably stupid that's the worry yeah yeah hiding inside of the other devices is not a thing because they actually scan all your equipment right this they like we have an extra set of peripherals that is only used for the matches. So that part of it is checked. And when it comes to scripting and all of that shit, Riot, I think they do pretty, pretty good because you are in a position to pretty much, you know, 
I lost my train of thought. Basically, they scan your computer. They see all the inputs, they save all the inputs, they save everything. So that part of it, that is like foolproof, you know? All the things that are inputs into the computer, they save it and they can ask, you know, they can check even if you press W, like Niski's case. Did he press W or not? No, he didn't press fucking W, he just got CC chained and he died like a griefer. You know, they can check that. That's cool. Don't you have screens right now? Well... What do you think I'm doing here? Would I be here if I have scrims, my friend? Okay. We can move on to the next topic. What is the next topic? So I also had this tweet about Jizuki, right? I told people, the Jizuki haters, to eat shit. I told them to eat shit. Let me just find the tweet. So basically, there's this topic of conversation that is interesting, in my opinion. Let me just uh, make a timestamp. 1632. Boom, that's a timestamp. So basically, most people just watch. It's very easy see a mistake and um you know if someone dies most players understand or connect in their mind that dying is bad missing a cannon they see as something as bad dying to a gank failing mechanically these are things that are very obvious to even the worst players they're like yeah dying haha he died he must be playing bad haha he missed an ultimate he must be playing bad. But the amount of errors, right? The amount of errors that happen due to inaction is insane, especially in the context of NALCS. A lot of players are not taking the opportunities that are presented to them. They don't take the trades that are presented to them. They don't hover into the right side of the map. They don't Put down the correct vision wards they don't have the correct base timings all of these things that the average viewer has no concept of at all nothing absolutely nothing players that have good numbers and just don't die are players that the community tend to celebrate especially if they're winning especially if they're winning if they're not winning it's kind of iffy you know but if they're winning and they have good stats and don't die a lot then these players get celebrated you know and a lot of players a lot of fucking great players tend to play on the edge right it's the same, the conversation about Caps, right? People are talking about, hey, Caps is inting. Either he's inting or he's brilliant. Claps or craps. And this is a player that is actively looking to, to win the game and to squeeze the most out of the game. This is something that, you know, that just means that you're pushing the limits of the game. Hilly Sang, another one of those players. People say, yeah, Hilly Int, Hilly Int, or, or he's brilliant. You know, that there's, it's, it's basically, you know, if, if you're in a world where you are constantly pushing the limits of what decisions you can make and push the limits of what your champion is, the mistakes can become more frequent. So is this conversation that I have, uh, I always say, activity decreases precision, right? But if you play at the higher level of activity constantly, you're going to eventually raise your precision and you're going to be a better player than ever, right? This has been the issue for North American teams for a very long time coming into the World Championship. So Team Liquid is a team that is consistently... You know, in, in the past, I don't know what the situation is now. You know, they're going through some turmoil. But when they went to the World Championship, they were a very, very precise team. If they managed to get advantages, they managed to win. They beat G2 once. 
They beat also Suning, who went all the way to the finals. Team Liquid was a very, very precise team. But in regards to activity and, and, and creating opportunities and pushing lane advantages and actually, you know, pressuring the game consistently, you are in a situation where if the enemy doesn't make too big mistakes, you're going to eventually fall over, right? And don't get me wrong, inaction can also be the right decision, right? There are situations where you're supposed to do nothing and that is the correct decision to make. Sometimes that's the case because it's a team game and you're reliant on others, you're reliant on timers, you're reliant on many, many moving objects in the game. Sometimes you're supposed to do nothing. Sometimes you're supposed to take a step back. You don't have to fucking limit test at every point in time. And it's not about limit testing. It really isn't about lim limit testing. Most of these players that are good and are taking decisions that might look questionable, they will give you a pretty fucking goddamn good reason as to why they did it. You know? And I can say from experience, like if we, if we look at three players that would be put in this bracket, right? It would be uh, Hilly, it would be Jizuke, it would be like someone like Caps. It would be, you know, th there's a lot of LPL players as well that are like this, you know? Either they're inting or they're one nining, right? It's, it's like the same. There's been situations where Rookie has been like this. There's been situations where, where the Shy has been like this, right? Perks as well. Like there's been situations where this is the case. And this is just people trying to play at the highest level and get the most out of their champions. And sometimes they're going to make mistakes that are so, you know, eye-gouging, eye you know? Do you think that certain viewers are simply young and don't understand how certain interaction works? No, not really. I think older people are just as stupid. I was stupid is the wrong word. You know, you can't expect the average viewer to be, you know, insanely high level. It's just, the, the, the League of Legends is a very complicated game. It's a very complicated game, and most sports are, right? But it's the same, like, uh, like this player scores a lot. He must be fantastic, right? Th these are very, very easy concepts to, to grab onto, right? Because everyone, you know, everyone wants to view themselves as a specialist. Everyone wants to view themselves in, as an expert. It's just human nature. We have an ego, you know? Yeah, ignorant would be uh, the better word. And um, that's okay, you know? And I was just so surprised by uh, the replies. That was, that was the most absurd thing for me. Because look at these replies, okay? I, I, I was so confused. Look at these replies of me. So I said, Jizuki's a, just a coin flipper, he's just into lul. I said, eat shit, which was a little bit too aggressive, you know? But I, I don't like it when people give uh, my boys shit, you know? Jizuki's my boy. So I say, most viewers don't see the amount of errors that take shape as inaction. Most people have a very linear view of the game, and that's a shame. But it, it is a shame. It definitely is a shame. Uh, let's see some of the, the replies. LCS, uh, LCs, or CLs, I don't know. Uh, Yamato, the truth is most of us just don't have the ability to analyze what is going on and just look at the results. When we saw someone die, we blame them. Then we have an expert's opinion parallel without under any understanding or ability to defend it. That is uh, beautiful. That is very, very true. I'm, uh, this guy was very intelligent. Let's make this bigger. Okay. Right? Uh, Transcendent into politics is more than a shame, it's a disaster. Uh, viewers are turbo biased towards absolutely risk averse players until they play one team fight too passively, then they realize that they aren't very good. What is Pablo? What's Pablo doing here? Just because. Oh, so this, this guy confused the shit out of me. I, I didn't understand this. Let's just make this smaller and then boom. This was very strange. This was very strange, okay. So let's, let's continue. Just because inaction is flawed, alternative does not mean the over-recklessness of one's play is excused at at least trying. 
I don't understand how did I remotely say this? I, I, I didn't say that you have to always be active. No, I say most viewers don't see the amount of errors that take shape as inaction. Right? There's a lot of mistakes that are subtle that the viewers don't see. That's my point. There are certain points in the game where you're supposed to not do anything. And that's the correct decision. That can be the case. I have a great respect for you. It sucks to see you sacrifice your potential to see the game differently than you do now for the sake of thematically agreeing with your life and game philosophy of letting it all out on the rift. It is not a sin to have biases. To be restrained by them is. What is, what is this guy on about? What's happening? <laughs> I just, I'm so confused. What's he talking about? I'm sorry if I'm overstepping here. My admiration to your body of work does not allow me to turn conjecture to reality or speak with any authority over the matter than what presumes. Again, simple theory. I apologize for coming off as rude. So I apologize. Papa bless. I think it's important to state that because opinions often appeal to people, they are just. I hope you don't take this the wrong way for I may have gone off a personal feeling and missed the point of this. God bless this guy. He fixed it. He fixed it. Man, I, I put him on blast and then he fixed it. Yo, Chris! How are you doing, Senkooks? It's good to see you in the chat, man. We, me and Chris have many good memories together. You know, I, I wish to meet again, Chris. I'm sure both of us have grown so much since the last time we met and it would be interesting, you know, to reminisce about uh, the old times. Maybe I bring you on, uh, on, on the podcast at one point. Inglorious Bastard, mistakes aren't excusable because of player mistakes in response. You have worked with him, you probably know his way of thinking and the reasoning behind decisions, but come on. Inaction that you're talking about is an inaction. Agree that linear thinking is good for any means. What is he, what is he talking about? Yeah, the Leblanc Quadra, Quadra in base. Holy. Scale to level 16. Senkooks. We had so many band-aid solutions for the way we played the game over in Splice. And uh, we, just, we just figured out a way. I remember we, we couldn't figure out how to play 2v2 mid. And then Crest was like, yo, just pick me these champs and it doesn't matter. I'm going to fucking scale. I'm going to smurf it. And he did. The man fucking delivered. We were just playing this 1-3-1 one, one thing. We were just looking for lane spots. We were just trying to get out of lane phase as fast as possible. And then just make the enemy dizzy with macro. It was uh, good times. This is... Uh, that was good times. Those people are silly. The professional players have always played the game differently and at a very high level. This does not mean that guys like Jizuki aren't doing things when they appear to be standing still. What? Oh, this is... This is the, the, he, he didn't understand my point, but that's okay. XT, J-Rad. I don't know who this is. Professional League of Legends Mulder, former Overwatch Top 500, former football EU coach. I like to meme. DMs open. Well, his DMs are open. That's fantastic. So this is... Um, I don't understand the XT. You know? Obviously he doesn't understand it. That's okay. You know? Not only in pro play, I play low elo. Whenever I play bad, they start flaming. How am I, or whoever wants to get better, get better? Same way everyone who's ever played the game gets better. Accept the criticism, self evaluate Don't feel sorry for yourself, just keep learning. Pressure creates diamonds. Oh, okay, look at these guys teaching each other things in my, in my, uh, in my connections. Very nice. Dunning-Kruger effect in action. Yes. Dunning-Kruger effect in action is very common in any competitive sport. I think it can be seen in the MMA community. It can be seen in the League of Legends community. It can be seen in the soccer community. And these are the communities that I have some hint of information about. Right? So this is a blessing. Very nice. Hard agree. Thank you. I truly hope this is a funny joke that I just don't get. Hard agree, but that's Castle's rule to point that out. I don't know why I came in with a, such a vengeance to this topic. I remember when I was reading it back then, it annoyed me a little bit more than it does now. But most of these people are quite reasonable. I have some smart people in the replies. Well, I applaud that. Thank you. So some smart people in the place. Very nice. 
the key idea was that there is a lot of mistakes that are basically what a pro coach or what a pro player views as a mistake is is pretty much a mistake is when you don't get the most out of your champion or a situation so you could win a team fight and we can still analyze and look at your mistakes and see what you could have done better because every every most pro players i i hope that almost every pro player does this is that you analyze your mistakes and you try to get more out of your situation unless you played a game absolutely perfectly which is very rare then there's mistakes to analyze right and to play a perfect game means to take every opportunity. It's not to have perfect KDA or to not miss a single CS. It is to, it is to you know, uh, what's it called? I lost my train of thoughts. I still have vaccine brain. My vaccine brain is, is, is melting me. So I, I forgot, I lost my train of thoughts. Forgive me. For those who don't know, I got my vaccine the other day. I still feel a bit dizzy. I had fever yesterday, I still have body ache, uh, but all in all, I'm, I'm fine. So, 5G, fully online. At this point, I would not call that hate, you should say LS is bullying Jizuki. Nah, I don't think so. You know, it's, you know, LS is, is, is speaking his mind about players and the game, and, you know, what, what Jizuki called disgusting was Jizuki's all chat behavior, and that is still understandable, you know? I'm not a bi the biggest fan of Jizuka's old chat behavior either, you know? But he does what he wants to do, right? I'm not his fucking father. At the same time, though, I don't know everything that LS has ever said about Jizuki, right? And I don't think anyone in chat has either. So I don't like it when people come in and speak for other people. Say, Th this guy thinks like this. This guy does like this. I don't like that. Piss off with this. Same thing with, you know, in the context of uh, acquiring players, you know, that's very, very common too, you know. Uh, usually, when it comes to the acquisition of players, I rarely listen to other people's opinions. Rarely listen to other people's opinions. I think... I think in a lot of cases, you know, it is very hard it is very, very difficult to understand the full context of someone's actions. You can get a hint of it, but it rarely paints the full picture. You can find, you know, in, in, in patterns, if, if everyone re keeps repeating the same opinion, then it's very useful, right? But in a lot of cases, the, the best thing I feel I can do is to get to know people myself, right? Because there's always narratives built around people, and uh, the community takes it away and then it affects, you know, the pro scene too, general managers and so forth. And it affects people's view of them and they keep parroting the same thing because people want to come across as knowledgeable and people are very afraid of saying, yeah, I don't know much about this player. Let's look into it, you know. They just, oh, no, I heard this, this and this and this, you know. And, um, you know, all in all, I don't like too much to, to listen uh, to other people's opinions about players. I like to make my own opinions. So once again, Joshua, you're doing this thing. If nothing is black and white, why does LS view the game as black and white? He really doesn't do that. For as far as I know, I know he doesn't look at the game black and white. He's trying to find many different colors in the game. And uh, I think it's unfair to say that he views the game black and white. You know, he's a very polarizing figure, so I understand that some people really, really like him, some people really, really dislike him. So there's, there's usually no in-between. Yeah, but guys... Um, enough. Always, always the voice of Imaro. At some point, people bring Alice opinions. 
and then it's I don't know what to do with this. Come on. So stop bring make your own opinions. You know, if, if you guys have your own opinion, no matter what your name is, I'm going to read it and judge it for what it is. I'm not going to, you know, make you judge you differently, depending on what your name is. I'd much rather have you guys make your own opinions, even it, if it's as silly and out there as possible, I will judge you for what it is. You don't need to come in and bring other people's opinions and make your own version of it just to appear smart. It's not the way. And, you know, LS, he puts a lot of time and work into the game, and he is actively trying to improve the scene. I have respect for that. We can leave it at that. What do you think about Reckless Flash Forward? I think it was good. I think it was very bad. Like, it was quite the grief, because like, he played that fight pretty bad. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. But that's okay, right? Playing one fight bad, it is what it is. Like... Alison has no combo, stopwatches, and he's afraid of him, and he flashes way too late because he could kill Irelia most likely, I think, with the, the last auto, because he had two... He had two... Uh, what's it called? Two stacks of silver bolts, right? So he definitely could have played this fight a lot better, and then he realized too late, flashed. It was just hilarious that, uh, you know, I imagine it being like this, you know, and it was like, Rack is like, yo, pick me vain. And then it's like, Caps is like, yo, is it going to win us the game? All right. Let's, uh, let's go for it. Well, in my opinion, Jizuki is the best mid lane in North America. The game was already over, but he played it bad. I don't think the game was over. I think he could have killed... Um... I think he could have killed Irelia and potentially survived. Of course, I expect uh, I expected the reckless to to lock in um, the vein. <laughs> I, I know how to look up his. The solo queue account, he played like 30 vein games in a row. Of course, I expect the vein. Adam is a fantastic player. I think he has very, very good intuition and instincts for how to fight. He reacts very well. These are things that are very tough to teach. Incredibly tough to teach. And um, the things that he needs to work on are things that are easily, you know, things that he can work on. So I'm very, very happy with Adam. This man has a very bright future in League of Legends, and uh, I'm excited. Very excited. Um, I don't think that uh, there is... Any reason to mention veterans tier list? I think, you know, whatever, man. It's just, this is how you get eyes on it, you know? Make some random ass fucking points. I'm not going to give it the time of the day. Let's see what else I want to talk about. Um, I was very surprised, well, not surprised, honestly, just what on earth, why, why did people get so upset over I Will Dominate? You know, once again, I Will Dominate is a polarizing figure, right? I think to be successful, which both LS and I Will Dominate are, you need to have strong opinions. You need to, be, you need to have this uh, willingness to put yourself into battles. You know? And um, I know once again that Reddit is not the place that likes our domain the most, which is, you know, it is what it is. You know, Reddit is it's not the most uh, prestigious uh, places for any information. 
that's kind of why I enjoy that we don't have the the biggest stream, you know. Like I I, I make my money from Fnatic. I'm very happy. I don't feel the urge to have like a big ass stream or something. I like the fact that we're 400 people. It's a decent amount. The chat goes at a decent pace. I'm happy, right? And um, keep in mind, someone like Owl Dominate, he has hours and hours and hours of himself just talking. Right? It's the same thing with Joe Rogan. With Joe Rogan, I will dominate anyone that really has a lot of hours of them talking publicly. Like LS, a lot of hours of them talking publicly. The odds are you're going to say something silly once in a while. And the mistake he did is, is an honest, honest mistake. Sometimes you, you remember something, you remember something wrong, you apologize for it, you move on. Right? Sometimes you're gonna say something stupid. And that's okay. That's normal. That's completely normal. And in my mind, you know, as far as I know, Jace should be winning against GP. Right? So even though he didn't see it, uh, you know, happens. <laughs> All in all, he apologized. I thought people were going to move on. But, you know, whenever there's an opportunity to throw in a jab at someone like I will dominate or LS, then people are going to take it. Whatever. What else do we have? I was surprised also by the Pablo thing. Like, oh, that was weird too. Like, well, what is... What's going on? I don't know. There's so much drama that's going on. I would be like, it just, I was a part of that. I would get so tired. But so tired. But it's, it, it brings attention. That's the sad part of it all. It just, it just brings attention. And attention is normal right it, it happens can you please talk about draft I'm not going to talk about draft this is the voice of Yamaro I'm not going to do anything to compromise myself As, uh, this, is, this is just me talking about random stuff Did you buy an air cup or is it someone else's in last week's video? I think Pablo has a personal bias against Dom because Dom has very down on all's talent in NA and Pablo took it kind of personally. Hmm, it's weird. You know, once again, you can't take anything personally. You know, if, if, if some talk shows and people that talk about, you know, if, if there's people out there like, like figures in the scene that are commenting on gameplay and um, they say that I draft like a monkey and they say that I draft poorly and that old teams that I ever work on were bad, if that's their opinion. That's their opinion. Why would I let that ever affect me? The only people I care about and the only people, people's opinion I care about is the opinion of my players. Because they have the full context of what I'm going through and they have the full context of, of who I am as a person. Me and my players, we spend 10 hours a day and um, we have the context of each other. We have the context of every action, we have the context of every word. And that's something that is very difficult to to share and explain. 
which kind of brings me back to the initial point where I don't I don't take everything for uh, granted when it comes to what people tell me about other people I'd rather have my own experience because with my own experiences I will have the full context and if people say that I'm bad at something that's okay because I know they don't have the full context if my players come to me and say yo Yamato you griefed it here I say okay I'll take a look at it because I trust your opinion okay What did you think of the discussion around the boss being a guest on LEC? Well, let me just make a timestamp because that's a good topic. Let me just make a timestamp. So I don't need to make timestamps later. You know, people complain, eh, timestamps. Which I would complain about too. I love timestamps. Timestamps are great. Holy, YouTube made a good update. Nice. Well, the beauty of the boss is of course his looks but what i was meant to see say is um the boss went on the lec broadcast and the talent team of the lec the production of the lec brilliant absolutely brilliant shocks best in the fucking business you have cathedral you have Dr. Akos, you have Quickshot, you have Vedias, you have Dr. Medic. I have nicknames for all of them. These people can make anybody be good on the broadcast. So that's first. Okay? That's first. Second. Upset's comment was in regards to what the boss is in solo queue, right? So he, he doesn't care if he's on broadcast or not. You know, Upset just made the comment that this guy is, you know, playing games with someone like the boss is fucking boring. Boring to play against, it's boring to have on your team. Because he just changes the fabric of the whole fucking game. He just fucking ults down, hits turrets, uses a passive, and they made the item only for him. Hullbreaker. No one else buys Hullbreaker, only him. It just it's only the boss. It could have just it could have been called the boss breaker. All we know. All in all, that's where the, the whole promise queue and also the opposite came, comment came came in from. Which is fine. Right? And once in a while to bring in a different character on the broadcast, I think that's cool. He was very sweet. I like that he came over to our uh, room and he said, hello. Hey guys, I just want to say this is the best team in Europe right now. He said to our camera. I always wonder why you're still using paper notebooks instead of phones and tablets because we're not allowed to use any electronics and also, you know, paper is king. It just is. Uh, using paper notebooks is just way better. Like, it, it just... The thing is, I never use... Like, I almost never use my notebook. I never open and look at it. For me, the simple process of writing it down makes me, you know, feel so good. I got that, as, I, as I write it down, it's like it goes back into the pen and straight to my brain again. So I just, uh, after writing it down, I remember it forever. Yeah. And I found this brand of, of notebooks that is just brilliant. So as silly as it may sound, you know when you open up a notebook, you open it up and then it's like, it's not flat. It's not flat. It has like this bump, you know? It's fucking... It's fucking... The notebook decided to be fucking Jennifer Lopez. Has fucking... You know? Like, what's, what's the point? And there's this notebook. This notebook brand that I found. 
it's just flat. You open it up, it's flat. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I love it. I love it so much. It's just flat. It's just, let me show you. Let me show you guys. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, my room is so dirty, guys. Anyhow, so this, this notebook is called Life and Pieces. So let me show you. Look at, look at the flatness. Look at the flatness, bruv. Look how flat it is. It's flat. Gorgeous, man. So good. Makes a huge difference. Just flat. Look at that. Boom. I love it. Absolutely brilliant. You know, I, I made this fuck up that I'm still paying for to this day. There's this fuck up. So basically, Amazon, right? You know, Amazon, they're taking over the world. These guys are thinking of more and more ways of fucking us money wise. And don't get me wrong, I love Amazon. When I need something, I order it from Amazon, boom. They ship it to me the next day. Boom. Brilliant. The other day, I needed some fucking stickers for my books. These stickers for my books. Right? Really brilliant. Love them. I needed them. Ordered them. They arrived. Gorgeous. I like Amazon. Next thing is they are trying to push every time you buy something. Every time you buy something, they're like, do you want to, uh, you know, get 5% off? Do you want to get 5% uh, off? You know, just uh, maybe 10%. You want 10% off? Just for you. And you're like, hmm, 5% off, hmm, this uh, 2 euro purchase here, I'm going to get 5% off. Holy, think of the money I'm going to save. I'm going to buy some Bitcoin. Hmm. And then you press it. Subscription. It's a subscription. It's a goddamn subscription. And then you're sitting there, you're beginning to calculate, you know, beginning to calculate. You're like, hmm, how many months uh, does it take for me to run out of these fucking stickers? You know, how many, how, how much, how much time will it take for me to run out of these stickers? Three months, six months, five months? Maybe even 12 months. Not sure. Three months. Now that's reasonable. And then they're like, yo, do you want 10% off? Like, hmm, 10% off? I'm doing this much. So 5% off. Why shouldn't I commit to the 10% off? Right? It just makes sense. So I'm browsing their items. Browsing their items. I'm like, okay. Household paper. Like the, the kind of, you know, the big rolls. They're about this size. Boom. The, this size. The, the rolls, right? The, not the, not the, like the big ones. Not the small ones that you use in the toilet, right? And yeah, don't forget the free credit. Of course I have the free credit cards. I need, I need fucking 2% kickback. Get some Amazon points to buy more shit than Amazon. 
And pretty much, I decided to commit to a subscription of these toilet rolls. So I see these toilet rolls these, uh, for the kitchen. I'm like, okay, I'll order some. And then I accidentally subscribed to a mother flipping box. So basically, I thought I'm getting one plastic package of household toilet paper. Instead, it was a box of six. Boom, 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 boom. So I had six times eight of these rolls. So I'm like, holy shit. I have way too many toilet rolls. Way too many. And what am I going to do with all these toilet rolls? I put them into a cabinet. Basically, it's not a cabinet. It's a room. I put them in a room. They have their own room. They have their own goddamn room. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this shit? Right? What am I going to do with all of this fucking toilet paper? Well, kitchen paper. Right? So I'm like, I need to begin to fucking... I need to get rid of it somehow. I need the space. So I begin to fucking wipe my ass with this shit. And toilet paper, you know... Toilet paper, you know, is, is designed to wipe your ass with. But these paper towels are not. It's a suffering, man. And I'm going through that shit my, myself. So basically... Take these fucking paper towels, towels and I fucking hold, fold them, rip them apart, split it into four. Boom. And I'm like, yo, I'll get through this. No problem, I'll get through it. You know? It's just, there's a certain amount of toilet rolls. Right? Eventually, we will run out of mother flipping paper towels. The months go by, the months go by, ding dong. Who's there? Motherfucking Amazon. Motherfucking Amazon. With more motherfucking paper towels. Oh, man. Oh. And now, I have like 100 paper rolls. But at least, at least I got 10% off. <laughs> at least I got 10% off, man. At least I got 10% off. And I have enough of these bad boys. To fucking. Look, look how many of them I have. I have fucking the endless. I have endless. Look at this. Fucking endless. It's like a, how many fucking notes am I going to make in books, man? How many notes should I make? Endless. That's how they get to you. That's how it's done. <sighs> Anyhow. Guests. Should we get guests or more Amazon stories? That's the question. Yeah, don't worry, Sanzaro. It's it's cut into very, very small pieces, so there's no problem. Amazon stories with the guest. Not guest. Bring the paper, not the guest. Ah, come on, man. Anyhow. 
guests. We could get Senkooks, we can get uh, Cabo Shout, we could get Feb even. Could ask some people, you know, get to know them. Just talk shit. Maybe they have their own Amazon stories. Could be interesting. Thank you very much, Reddish Star, for your uh, subscription. Yeah, Febivin is a very interesting cat, man. Very, very interesting person. Attila could be one. You know? I could talk to maybe Mac. Could maybe bring on Grabs. We can talk about random shit, you know? Cathedral. Whipple. Bro, I can just bring Whipple on and I'll just... Yeah, I'll just let him talk. Bring on Showmaker. I'm gonna ask Showmaker a question he doesn't like, and then he's gonna be... I don't know if you guys have seen that video, but this is one of my favorite videos ever made. Let me just show you guys real quick. Oh, shit. Let me show you guys this brilliant ass video. Wait, did someone give, give me something? Oh, uh, holy Shazbot. Love the stream. Gotta go back to work. Just want to say I've always been a huge fanatic fan and a huge Marcano fan. It's awesome to see my favorite coach and my favorite team. Thank you very much for 1,000 bits. I'm going to put them to good use. Thank you. So this is one of the best. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's happening? One of the best videos I've ever seen in a long time. Look at this shit, man. My man has been so... <laughs> I love this. I don't know. It's just... <laughs> I wonder if this sound... I feel bad for the man. Oh shit, I feel really bad for the guy. Because it's understandable. It's relatable. And it's the best league clip of all time, that's for sure. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. The madness. It truly is a madness. Ay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Seal G. What about Seal G, guys? Seal G is a madness. It's really, really crazy you know usually like basically keep in mind most players filter what they say publicly with you know with some kind of fear of repercussions or fear of losing jobs or fear of future jobs right because it reflects poorly on you if you talk badly about your current employer and um what pobelta wrote man Jesus, man. Oh, Pobel's a rope, man. I, I feel bad for the dude. Now, I met Pobelter back when I was on a team with Amazing. We were playing on Triple A together. This was back in season three. Season three summer, I played on a team with Amazing X. We played a LAN called Gfinity. Gfinity. And uh, this Gfinity land was very strange. It was very weird. I, we, we were like on a boat. Like the first thing, like we, we, I don't understand why we went on a boat. So it's basically, we're like, we have to meet here in this location really fucking early in the morning. 
We're gonna go on a boat. Like, okay. We go next to the London Eye. We're like, oh, this is the London Eye. Maybe we we're gonna go on the London Eye. Does it look pretty sick? It looks pretty close because it's fucking 7 a.m. in the morning. But we go on this boat. So we go on this boat, ri boat ride, all right? And every team is there. Oh, we're on this boat ride. And uh, we get some sandwiches. It was okay. We take this boat ride. And then the, the location that we played in, the location that we played the event at, was, was connected. The, the landmass was connected. There was no need for a boat. There was no need for a boat. We got to the event and we were there way too early. Way too early. So we did all of that shit, waking up early just to go on a boat and eat a sandwich on it. Madness. Anyhow, we go up the stairs and Jesus Christ, like basically it was just, it was a room as big as my apartment. I have a pretty big apartment, like 160 square meters. Don't want to flex. It's, it's a bad thing to have because I pay way too fucking much in rent and I need to move as soon as possible. We walk in. There's a Call of Duty tournament right there. There's a Call of Duty tournament right there. And you, these guys don't give a fuck, bro. Basically, this tournament, this tournament, there's four tables. And the teams are placed at these four tables and everyone is playing against each other. So basically, whatever I scream, the enemy team is going to hear. So I'm watching these Call of Duty guys play. And I'm getting inspired. I'm getting very inspired because they're like, yo, sit the fuck down, you piece of shit, you cunt. You know, like they, they're just shouting very vulgar language. They didn't give a shit, you know. It's like, boom, pow, killed you, motherfucker. You know, it's like, <laughs> they, they didn't give a shit, man. They didn't give 10 fucks straight from Xbox Live. They were just playing Call of Duty in front of each other. They were shooting bangers you know this is back in 2013 this is early esports you know no one got cancelled yet there was no cancellation thing going on in the community and i'm like yo this is sick this is insane so keep in mind i'm like 17 i'm like 17 18 i'm 17 so i'm like yo this is this is insane <laughs> and then we, we we play we play this LAN event and the reason I brought this up, the reason I brought this up was because I had Curse Gaming in my group. As the first time I met Paul Belter. Paul Belter, I believe Alltech, and then this top laner, Rux. Rux. And oh my god, what a, what a, how I annihilated Rux. I completely ass blasted him, but we lost. We lost to Curse Gaming. I don't know if this was Curse Gaming Academy or what was going on. Paul Belter was on that team. I had this, this guy in mid called Spirit of Mage. No, Spirit of Mage was a different team. Lego My Ego was my mid laner. Something, I don't know what the fuck his name was. Sorry. He choked so hard. He was playing against Paul Belter Jace. And back then there was no adaptive runes. There was just runes. He was playing against Jace. And... My mid laner went AD runes Ari against Jace. And I'm, I, just, I just click him and I'm like, what the fuck? How, how is this possible, man? Why, why did you go AD runes? You went AD runes against Jace? Why? You want to basic attack trade with him? You're not against Kassadin? Being amazing, we're getting tilted off the planet. Nevertheless, you know, first game we play against uh, Curse. I completely ass blast rocks. You know, I'm playing Vladimir into cannon and I completely disrespected him. Completely, completely disrespected him. I bought, like, I believe the equivalent of Nidus Large Rod. I bought Nidus Large Rod. I rushed Death Cap. I'm like, yo, this guy stinks. I'm going to smash him. That was completely, completely 
insane very far ahead i was in very good conditions you know i won the nine that game i played vladimir into cannon next game against the same team because it was double round robin i play cannon into vladimir and i you know solo kill but it's not enough because i have a fucking ad Ari in mid lane what a disaster and to bring back to the call of duty thing you know when i'm when i'm solo killing you know, I'm sitting two meters away from my opponent. So I was fucking shouting. I was like, fuck him up. Fuck this guy up. He fucking sucks. <laughs> that, was, that was a good time. It was a good time. It was really, really a good time. So I was doing the Call of Duty thing. And then eventually everyone, everyone started doing it too, you know, it just became a thing. Aha! Everyone started shouting. There was a madness. But Paul Belter was really nice. I had a few interactions with him and he was cool. He was cool. You know, back then, you know, coming from NA was, was like a big deal, you know? NA was well regarded. You know, NA was, you know, we had the CLGs and the TSMs and you had the... You know, everything was, was going well for North America. They were the pioneers. They were the front runners of the whole streaming culture and, you know, setting up the game for success and all that shit, you know. They, they were quite strong, you know. They were doing well. It was like, ooh, North American team, ooh, spicy. But nevertheless, to bring back to the point of CUG, I don't know, man. I feel bad for the homies, you know. Obviously, like, there's... It's just a terrible situation because, you know, it's just a mixture of everything, right? There's a thought of what comes next. There's a thought of what the fan opinion is. There's a thought of if you get benched in a team that is performing really, really bad, your reputation is absolutely in the toilet. There's, there's everything's on the line for these boys. So the stress that they go through is immense. You know, but at the same time, you know, this is what esports is. You know, you've got people breathing down your neck. You got people breathing down your neck. Because I know that there's millions of people out there gunning for my job. Same way the CLG boys, there's a million people gunning for their job. But at the same time, maybe not. Because, you know, CLG seems to be on fire. Like CLG have seemed to have lost their soul completely in terms of how to run an organization. And obviously I'm speaking only from all of the things that I've seen from the outside, but already the things that you see from an outside, if you can make this distinction, then it is rough. Yeah, it is what it is. You know, I hope uh, they figure out themselves did being a coach at the age of 19 affect you in any way honestly i feel ancient i feel like a relic like i've been in esports for such a long time and i've seen and gone through a lot i have traveled most and more than most people i've worked with more most more than most people i've you know i i started working at the age of like 11 and 12 and I've kept a job ever since because I had to work with my father after school go work with your father how long do we work we work until we're done we could be done very late sometimes so in terms of my age I feel I feel like 40. I feel like I'm 40 or something. It doesn't help that I smoked for three years of my life too. Like, a mo like I smoked like insanely much. But now I stopped. I'm very happy that I stopped. But now the vaccine is kind of killing me. Not killing me, but it's like I'm tired. Very tired. How do you not be burnt out? Well... I think I've 
pushed myself very hard at a young age and I think that allows you to push yourself more. I think when, when, when you're growing up, you, you should push yourself. You, like, you should push yourself and really figure out your limits and, you know, don't give in to these norms of people using very heavy words very lightly, you know? Burnout is a very heavy word. Depression is a very heavy word. You're going through it, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very troublesome. But I see a lot of people throwing around these words. Like it's nothing, you know? Like tired from working is not burnout. You know, some melancholy, having a sad day is not depression, right? It is, these, these words are very, very powerful. And of course, if, if you are going through a tough time, you, should, you deserve all the help you can get, you know, and I wish you all the best. And if you're truly going through something like that, then, you know, you should treat truly, you know, it, it is very, very serious, very, very serious. But I notice that a lot of people are throwing around these words a little bit too easily. But my point being is, I think it's interesting to push yourself and to see what you're capable of. And I did that at an early age. And that makes it easier for me to work all day, if it's necessary, for many days. As long as... Uh, as long as... Uh, you know, we, as people, uh, do something we're passionate about. I think it's a lot harder when you're not passionate about something and love something. The double clap we see you do at to the end meetings, is that a mental tool you used to separate a, a hard work team as compared to leisure time? Yeah, pretty much. You know, it is, it's closure. And uh, people condition themselves to have uh, very, very, like, people are conditioned to have their state of mind tied to certain smells and certain sounds. It is even tied to, to learning. In a lot of cases, you know, a tool that I used when I played League of Legends was I always chewed gum, right? I always chewed gum when I was tryharding and I was always chewing gum on matches. It just, that, that, that minty flavor just put me in a very specific state of mind. It's the same, you know, I read the study about how sounds and smells could stimulate, you know, how we learn. So pretty much, we, so, so, so the study that basically, I, I shouldn't say that I read the study, but the way the study was explained to me was the association of senses can put us in that same state of mind, right? Uh, thank you very much, JMAC92, for your subscription and also for your kind message. Thank you. So basically, this study, as it was explained to me, was that you could... Let's say you, you studied with a metronome on. The metronome is just... Tuck, 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 That's the metronome. And then this metronome was turned on while you're sleeping. And they use this to test if you could learn actively while you're sleeping. And the evidence was pretty substantial. Yeah, it's like oh, our mind is, is, uh, associates things very, very well, right? Use a metronome to learn prayer flicking in RuneScape. Luckily, I already know it. Which brings me to uh, probably the final topic, uh, the final topic of uh, the day, which is uh, something that I'm going to try out myself and then give you guys my results. 
So I've been reading a lot about sleep. Which is funny that you guys bring up the topic of sleep in the chat right now. I've been reading a lot about sleep and listening to people far more brilliant than me in regards to the topic of sleep. The neuroscientists, neurobiologists, high up people that are pretty much, you know, really exploring the idea of what sleep is and why we sleep, which is the title of the book that I read. Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. So I was introduced to this man. I, I, I wasn't introduced. I, I, I don't know why I, I say that, but I, I, I got to know of this man while watching the Joe Rogan experience. I know some people out there think Joe Rogan is a polarizing figure, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. There's some very, very interesting uh, podcasts. Matthew Walker is, is brilliant. Right? And this, this book was very, very eye-opening. And there's also this man called Andrew Huberman. And there's certain tips that I'm going to test myself in order to get the most out of my sleep. And for those interested, can follow me on this journey. Uh, for those curious, can just find out uh, the results uh, after uh, a couple of weeks of this. And all in all, I'm excited to give it a try. I've noticed, you know, there are certain days where I feel very energetic, certain days where I feel less energetic. I think the consistency and what I gain out of my sleep is probably impactful. Something that was so profound was, you know, very Captain Perfect official. Something that was so profound that really made, made this eye-opening to me was humans, like Homo sapien, is the only species that intentionally deprive themselves from sleep. Every other animal really, really, really make sure that they sleep. And that was profound to me. I was thinking, I was like, yeah, my cats sleep all the fucking time. They sleep all the time. Yeah, it does make us sound dumb as fuck. The only human being to deprive ourselves from sleep. And, you know, the world is a little bit unfair on us because there's a lot of, like, stimulation. You know, there's a lot of things in the world that, that prey on our human nature. And um, that makes it tougher. You know, screens and phones and sounds and all that shit, you know. There's a lot of things that keep us awake, right? A lot of things that are interesting too. Yeah, sometimes you don't have time to sleep, yes. But I think for the majority of the people that are watching this podcast, most of the time we just are wasting our time, right? But all in all, the first thing, of course, is to find a routine. So the routine I'm going to stick to is I'm going to sleep from 3 o'clock to 11 o'clock. That, to me, sounds very reasonable. I'm going to do from... 3 o'clock to 11, which makes it uh, a perfect 8 hours, right? I want to sleep 8 hours. I feel good when I sleep 8 hours. So that's a routine that I'm setting for myself. And this is something that I'm going to maintain always, because having a rhythm in your sleep is very, very important, right? Second, I'm going to make sure that all the exercise I do is earlier in the day. Because something that Matthew Walker pointed to was if you do exercise later on in the day, it's going to impact uh, your sleep and you don't want to be, you know, uh, you know, too active in your mind later. Makes it more difficult for your brain to, to wind down. So I'm going to make sure that 
three hours before bed, I'm going to also you know, make sure I don't exercise. Just easy. I make it sound like I'm fucking some buff dude that's exercising all the time. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm not. Clearly. So that's going to be an easy one for me. Reduce caffeine and nicotine consumption. That's another thing that he points out as a good advice. Caffeine, I usually do at a very... You know, caffeine is something also that I do regulated already. And I think that helps uh, a long way. Usually I take caffeine around uh, 1 o'clock in the day. Right? 1 o'clock after lunch, that's when I pull out uh, caffeine. I do it with L-theanine as well. So this is what I'm trying for myself. Obviously, I am not a doctor, so don't follow these recommendations at all. I'm just sharing what I'm planning to do. And I'm going to tell you guys, you know, my plans. And then I'm going to give you guys some feedback and tell you guys what I went through and how it helped me. Uh, another one is to not uh, fucking drink alcohol, which is very easy. I don't drink any alcohol. Eat light at night. So uh, another thing how our rhythms, our rhythms are tied to eating too. So basically, I'm going to make sure that I have uh, the same eating hours every day, which is uh, I'm going to eat lunch at 13. I'm not going to have any breakfast. And then I'm going to eat dinner at 19 o'clock, which turns into, you know, a, a version of, uh, you know, I, I have a certain eating window and then I'm not going to eat. It's very easy for me to snack late at night. Elena makes some food. I... I'm going to make sure that I eat at 13, eat at 19, two meals a day. In between, maybe I snack something, but that is my eating window. So which, which makes it uh, six hours of an eating window. I will do fasting and so forth, right? So that's going to be my eating window. Uh, next thing is the moment I wake up, I'm not going to snooze. So I'm a big snoozer, very, very big snoozer. And snoozing apparently is... Very, very bad for you. I... I'm not going to snooze. The moment I wake up, I'm going to expose myself to sunlight. So this, there was this very profound thing that... Uh, basically, you can download this app. Right? You can download this app. Uh, let me just find it. It's called Lux. I like the champion Lux. So Lux pretty much shows you how many uh, light units are in that cubic meter. Right? And it is crazy how much of a difference it is. So basically, I, right now I'm pointing it directly at two very strong lights. Right? Very strong lights. If you pull out this app outside, even if the sun is covered by clouds, the amount of light that, that is occurring outside is just it's mental. And light makes you wake up, gives you this cortisol pulse, and it has a profound effect of alertness and awakeness. Because that's a key part, right? You want to sleep, and then sometimes people that sleep long and well wake up and they're still tired is most likely due to the fact that either their sleep was poor, which could happen, right? You could drink alcohol, you might not have good deep sleep and so forth. A, a key reason could be that you don't haven't exposed yourself to, to light. And apparently you need to go outside, because if you do it through windows, the, 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 the light that comes through a window is... 50 to 100 times less effective. So once again, I'm explaining this like a absolute dummy. I'm just explaining what I'm going to try. So I, every time I wake up, I'm going to go straight to my balcony. I'm going to own there for about 20 minutes. And I'm going to make sure that I get a lot of sunlight. Because that is going to wake me up. You know, exposing myself to, to sleep. Helps regulate sleep patterns and helps me wake up. Helps, helps me, you know, definitely, you know, start the day in a proper manner. So um, that is going to be a part of my schedule. 20 minutes in the sun because I also walk to work, right? 
I'm going to walk to work, I'm going to walk home from work, and that makes my total time 40 minutes in the sun minimum a day, which is super cool, right? That's going to help me wake up in a proper manner. I'm going to avoid laying in bed unless I'm going to go to sleep. That's the only thing that is for. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to go to bed at 0.30, and I'm going to shut everything off at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. I shut everything off. I dim down the lights in my apartment. I turn off my phone. I set the alarm. And I'm going to end the day with either a very hot shower or a hot bath. Going to bed, you know, going to bed and making sure that uh, things are uh, cool uh, is, is, is very important. And uh, all in all, I'm just going to read a book under some candlelight and then I'm just going to go to bed. And then eventually I might experiment with magnesium and so forth, but I'd rather try to do the things that uh, I can do actively with my own body and that is, that is and things that are actively for free. But this is my plan and we're going to see how, uh, you know, how it's going to work. Yeah, cold showers I also do. I, I am a big Wim Hof fan, so I've been doing cold showers for the majority of the last five years. Cold showers, you activate your reptilian mind, is always what uh, Wim Hof says, you know? No, well, science, apparently, people way smarter than me say that... Uh, you're not supposed to exercise late in the, in the night before going to bed. I can, like, at, at one point, so basically with cold showers is, it's similar to caffeine, right? You build up a resistance. Like at one point I was like, I'm standing under the cold shower, I feel nothing. But I just had to stop. I just had to stop and uh, then I reset. So I, I, like, at one point I could stand in cold showers for like 20 minutes and not give a shit, you know? Just not give a shit. In the, in the coldest possible water, I took ice baths and it's just, it, I didn't give a shit. So I had to reset my tolerance. So always, I, I reset my tolerance and then I build up my tolerance. Cold showers are amazing. Really, really amazing. It is like cocaine uh, to your soul. Cold baths are, are, are brilliant. But anyhow, this is where we're going to start. So I repeat. Good schedule and sleep. Eight hours. Boom. Wake up, 20 minutes in the sun. One o'clock, lunch. Nine o'clock, dinner. That's going to be my eating window. 2 a.m., boom. Lights off. I'm going to read a book. I'm going to take a nice bath. Boom. Going to bed at three, and we're going to see what kind of an effect this has on my energy. And I'll report in. Obviously, this is not a recommendation for anyone. I just thought it would be interesting to, to do something and then, you know, learn about something. Dinner is at 7 o'clock, which is 19, right? Should I take a cold shower every time I promos? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, wary of, you know, giving recommendations because I am not a doctor. I'm not a licensed physician. I am not in any position to give any recommendations to, to anyone. Maybe I would put you in danger, and I wouldn't want that. So do your own research, ladies and gentlemen. But this book was really, really, really good. Very nice. Really, really enjoyed this one. Why We Sleep. Matthew Walker. A neuroscientist shows how a good nice shut-eye can make us cleverer, more attractive, slimmer, happier, healthier, and ward off cancer. It's probably a little too soon to tell you that it saved my life, but it's been an eye-opener. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I even had one of those uh, weird things, what are they called? A Kindle, and... Uh, 
Not for me. Really not for me. Nevertheless, let's think about what guests we can bring on. Fnatic, 10 and 3, first place shared with Rogue. I don't know who Riot Games, LEC are trying to fool by saying that Rogue and Fnatic is not the match of the motherfucking week. Let's be honest here, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed the match of the week. G2 Misfits may be interesting because Elder Dragon, blah, 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 blah. But Rogue vs. Fnatic, the fight for first, is going to be game number five on the Friday. Very excited. Rogue is a great team. It'll be exciting to test ourselves against them. I think we can take it if everything goes you know, the way we expect it to go, the last time we played, it was indeed very juicy. Kindle is really good for traveling. I can take a lot of books with me that way. Sure, sure. But usually when I travel, I don't want more than one book. <laughs> I am pretty decisive with uh, my reading. <laughs> and then I have uh, Audible, right? There can only be one, number one. That is true. All right. I thought I'm going to play a league game now. So for the people that want to stick around and watch, you can, you're welcome to do so. Um, yeah. Uh, let's continue. I'm going to just restart the stream real quick. So, so stick around. Don't leave too quick. Uh, for the people on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. For the people on Spotify, thank you too. I uh, appreciate it. And uh, sorry once again for the delays. I still feel quite sick, but at least energetic enough to, to, to oink a bit on the voice of your model. I got the vaccine, BioNTech, Pfizer. I hope that in five years, my balls won't disappear or something like maybe. What if like they didn't do enough testing and then in like six years, er like every human being that got the vaccine just has like six assholes or something. Like my <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously, I <laughs> obviously I'm joking, but uh, who knows? <laughs> let, let me reset the stream real quick. <laughs>